How did you make room? I'll just write that down. How did you make room for that space that was necessary? I love that you speak on that because I speak on that so much, but I would love for you to share how you made more room. So, so, so the two strongest emotions in this universe is love. And then the other one is fear. And, and so I had a lot of fear and anxiety because I've got this family, which I love and cherish you know, I got a new grandson, you know, two year old. He he has abilities. And so I've got all of this stuff that I'm that I'm I'm handling. And I'm like, man, I got I gotta I gotta, you know, I gotta I gotta pay for stuff. And and it's and then that that fear about your master. And 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 and, and I'm not gonna shortchange, I have actually done the work. I've I've taken, you know, COVID the year 2020 was the greatest year because I I was able to take I don't know how many courses and workshops and just sit and read and read hundreds of books, you know, since, since I started this and just, so, so I've actually, so I've, I've done the work Zen and, but, but I, 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 I there was always that seed of doubt that says I wasn't ready. And, 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 and to make space, the only thing you have to do is release. And, and what I needed to do is release myself from the job. That's all I had to do. And once I did that, floodgates opened. And, and that's that's the challenge. And so people get stuck in their own way. And, and, and I'm no different. I needed to get out of my own way and understand the purpose and the enormity of what I need to do here on this earthly plane this lifetime. 1,000%, 1,000%. The first time that I met you, you were speaking about the epigenetic energy. And I've been so excited for you to come on here to speak on this. I would love for you to dive into the mysterious realm of the epigenetic energy and its correlation with generational curses. While exploring while exploring how this energy works in detail and uncovering what ties them together to give a deeper understanding of their relationship. Cause I remember we were standing in the healing environment and you had mentioned, I brought up, Oh, that sounds similar to generational curses. And I told you, I was like, generational curses has never resonated with me that phrase. And you had, understood why but you're like when people say it they're not that far off and then you are going into the epigenetic energy so can you please dive deep into that epigenetic energy you all literally tune into this get your notebooks take notes because what he's about to share with you is so transformative so so dr bruce lipton uh came up in this in early in the 70s and the 80s. And, and, and so he understood that DNA, uh, the storage capacity of DNA and the way this whole uh, so reality works is, 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 is the DNA will, will, will really carry forth memories and trauma from ancestors. And he was literally laughed at by doctors and his peers. One, well, you fast forward to today, he is revered. And so he was 100% right. And so epigenetic memories are, are, so the DNA, one strand of DNA can hold somewhere in the neighborhood of about 714 petabytes of memory. There's nothing else on this earth can store that much, right? And so that means that, that everything that happens to you or your ancestors gets stored in your DNA. And it gets passed through the RNA of the, of the mother and the father. It used to everything. 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 Yeah. And so it used to believe that it just gets passed through by the mom, but now by but the 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 dad. But now they're 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 finding that it's the mom's DNA RNA gets passed through too. So all of that down 
in the lineage gets passed through. And it goes back 35 generations. So that's 500 years. And, and so you may be carrying ancestral trauma that you don't even know. And, and you're feeling some type of way because of it. Now that that that's where it takes sort of practitioners to really hone you because because it is absolutely hard. It is it is hard to find out, figure out what trauma or everything else that that's, that that's, that that's going inside of you. And that's why you and I and we agreed to be born here to help people through that. And and so and so those epigenetic memories, you know, for instance. Uh, the way they used to, you know, enslave heirs, right? And so uh, the bucks, you know, the, the the black, the black, you know, the blacks they would, they would come in, and slave owners would sell the men, you know, and they would these men would procreate with with other, you know, slave, you know, black women in their plantation, and then they would sell them, and then they would go somewhere else. And so that trauma is in our community is is carried through so that's why you see more of this situation in our society in our african american society because it's carried through our, our the way we infight that comes from the buck fighting that trauma comes from plantations owners fighting black bucks against each other, that trauma just doesn't go away. That trauma is embedded in our genetics. And so we have to personally be aware of that to be able to understand and change our DNA and change our approach about it so that we don't carry it through our children. Because if we don't do that, what happens is we continue to carry that forward. There may be some angry or something that happened in our lineage or something that gets carried through our ancestors and everybody in our ancestors are angry or violent for something. Well, maybe something happened 500 years ago and it hasn't been sort of released. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It gets transmuted, so it keeps coming through. That's epigenetics. So we have to understand that and understand that we have a responsibility to, in ourselves. And, 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 and a lot of people Zen aren't ready to understand that. It, you, can't, you, you, you can't leave it to something or someone else to do that. You have to realize it subconsciously and be aware of it yourself so that you personally raise your energetic vibration level because you're not responsible to fix anyone else. You're responsible to fix you. And then that sort of expands your energetic auric field, your Taurus field. And then your Taurus field affects everyone else that you get in contact with. And so maybe they'll start to understand or start to, to sort of sort of you know absorb some of that energy, some of that light energy that you're you're giving off, and you don't have to say a word. And they come up to you and ask you a question. And I had to learn that hard way. And, and, and everything's a lesson. And and, my, and 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 I'll share this. My, my I love my I love my stepson, but it it has been a challenge for me in the past ten years because he's he has an ancestral lineage of anger that I've never seen before, and it's it's carried through, and and so he needs to understand that, and so he's in this victim. And so I used to be angry because he didn't see in him what I saw in him. And, and then he didn't understand that, that that he didn't look at me and 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 sort of observe what I did on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and I was angry. And and I and I sat in it. And then I started to understand that it's not about him, it's about me. And I, I need to embrace the the state that he's in. Yes. And and, and it is never my purpose 
or responsibility to fix anyone, but to embrace who they are yes. and be ready for when they come and walk in and ask a question. And then that's when the dynamic changed. Now, he's still going through his challenges, but he is absolutely improved from when we first, when I first, uh, you know, was interact with him to today. He's got a long way to go, but but he is actually doing that. And so that's what I had to learn. And so you get this ego in you that, man, I'm a healer. Well, I can heal anybody. It's not your responsibility to heal anyone. It's that's your responsibility to, 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 to point and show them where to go. And then they have to make the walk. They, they have to do the work. work. Yeah. And Healing so that, for navigators. Facts. Yes. yes. And, and you have to understand that, uh, I know you and you were talking about the practitioner that uh, that did your hands. And I, and I know who that was, right? And so, and, and so they're on their journey too, right? Yeah. And sometimes you got to get out of your own way of thinking that you know everything, right? And so we we were sitting in the in the in the center it was about a month and a half ago, and we were sitting in the, in the in the lounge area, right? And this this young brother walks in, right? Now I immediately tapped into his energy. I immediately knew that he wasn't in a position he didn't open himself to be healed, right? And so he's one of them pontificators and he was one of those people that just everything you tell him, he's going to, he's going to shoot it back to you. Right. And so I kept silent. That person jumped in immediately. He said, he said a couple of things and then she just jumped in and, and, they, and they started going back and forth for 15 minutes and I'm sitting there smiling. Then I didn't say one word. And then when he finally got done, he proceeded to, ask her on a date really yeah. and so she was kind of shook by it right and and so she she denied him and then he left right and so i asked her i said you notice i didn't say a word and i, and I asked her i said why do you give energy to somebody who isn't in a position to open up to be healed mm-hmm yeah. I said, I, and, yeah. And, and she was sort of shook by that. And 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 she immediately, you know, got up her things and walked out. She didn't say a thing, but I knew that she was she was rattled. But but I needed to say that. And and, and some people want to be heard and they don't want to be healed. Say that so, again for the people all the way in the back lane. Some people just want to be heard and they don't want to be healed. So your heart is the one sort of thing that will never lead you. So if you're discerning with your heart, that's the one thing. The minute he went in, I'm tuned in. He is not in a position. He is not in a position to, to, to really to, to receive anything. And he wasn't. And so I, I kept silent. And so that and so five years ago, I would have been all in. I would have been we would have been back and forth and, and wouldn't have gotten nowhere. But 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 that's what that the first thing as empaths, healing practitioners, is to, that we need to learn is discernment. That's the first thing, because that's what's going to drive and and really elevate you. And and there's a lot of things that purposely gets placed in your life to 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 measure your discernment to see if you are tuned in as you think you are. And, and, and I think that's, that's the lesson that a lot of us as, as, as practitioners and empaths and gifted, one of the things that we need to learn. And we all go through that lesson. We all have to go through it. And so that's, that's what we have to do. X, 1,000%, 1,000%. Lynn, what is a life verb that you live by that has supported you on your journey? This is my signature question and has supported you in your becoming of your purpose. A life verb means living in action. A life verb also encourages you and supports you in making a commitment to purpose. So what is your life verb? It's so funny because now I know exactly what my life verb is. My life verb is, I am a master of all that I am. I am a map. That's the title of this podcast. And no, and no I'm a master what, of all that I am. And no matter what comes my way, 
I have a responsibility to sit in it and come out being a master. So I am a master of all that I am. And, and it's so funny, and, and I'll give you this story. I was, I was, I was still, I, I was, I was working, I was living in Chicago. This is way before I met uh, a re-up in Jamaica. And I was going up, I was on, I was on the path and I was a manager there uh, of, of a, and we, we, we have a calibration lab. So we have, we go out and our technicians go out and calibrate equipment for various customers. And in Chicago, there was a customer that used crystals to make crystal oscillators for equipment and all of that stuff, right? So it was this old technician, right? And he went out and he, before he was telling me all about this company and, and I knew. And so he went out and he came back and there was this, he, and he just gave me this huge clear quartz master crystal. It's about this big, right? And, 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 and 16 years ago, I didn't understand what it was. And he didn't know because he was just, you know, and, 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 and I don't know what, I don't know if he's still alive or not because he was older, but he just started, he says, here. And I didn't, I was like, I says, what's this for? He says, I'm just giving it to you, you know? And, and so I kept it. And so recently, I, uh, you know, I, I, when I was, when it was time for me to really tune in because everything happens for me in time that it happens, that's a master crystal. So that crystal clear quartz, I mean, it is clear. That master crystal sort of drives every, all the other crystals. So. If you walk into our center, that master crystal is sitting in the energy room and that energy of master crystal just flows and it flows and it flows and all the other crystals in the apothecary there. It's, it's like an energetic flow. So when you walk in, that's what you feel, right? And so I am a master. And so source is telling me you are a master. And so I'm a master of all that I am. I am a master. I just got to write that down. I got so many notes, Lynn, over here, okay? I am a master of all that I am. I absolutely love that. Lynn, where can our listeners find you? Where can our community connect with you? I got the healing environment scrolling. If if you're listening on audio, go to my YouTube page, Life Verbs Podcast. You will see the healing environment, www.thehealingenvironment.org, their website. But where else can they find you, Lynn? Because you 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 everywhere. You got all types of places they can find and connect yeah, with yeah. you. It, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get out there. You know, so it's been it, it's been challenging navigating the YouTube. I'm asking, I'm asking my wife, how does, how does this Instagram stuff work and going live and all that? So, so, so I have an my Instagram handle is Lynn underscore Gaffney three underscore Master underscore Teacher, and so just go there, follow me. I'm, 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 I post a lot of sort of lives and stuff like that, and then uh, on YouTube I have a channel now. I just look up Lynn Gaffney. And you'll see, I've got, I've got, I think four, four, four videos on there now. So, uh, so I'm excited. Uh, I've got a couple of things coming up this month. We've got some, uh, uh, the 15th of this month. Uh, I've got a session that I'm going to, I'm going to be holding uh, uh, with a Dr. Shamila. She's a neuroscientist. And we're going to talk about the, the, the sort of benefits of meditation. And we're going to go in, we're going to go deep. And we're going to talk about that on the 15th of this month. And 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 I and 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 so Jamaica introduced me to her, and I was just giddy. I was just giddy. And so we're gonna we're gonna do that. And then at the end of this month, on the 28th, there's going to be a sacred male experience. And so what I what I find found is there's a lot of sort of opportunities for men to really go out and and open up. There's a sacred sons who's, who do up. Tremendous job, uh, 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 Kevin Walton his group. But then there's this this group, and I'm thinking, how do the guys that aren't ready to go in and do oh. all of their closest and touchy feely stuff? So this is going to be a three hour session of just giving them tools, talk about what the reality of what they're experiencing from a scientific perspective, and then we're going to give them tools that they can go to their home, in privacy, their own bathroom, wherever, and do because we have a responsibility to release the things that, that we take in all day and all of the stresses that we're not doing as men. And then, and then when, when the men are ready to share it with their significant others, they can do that. But we're going we're gonna to start that on the end of this month. 
Uh, we've got a women's retreat on the 21st of this month, which is going to be powerful. Uh, that's going to be powerful for all the women coming in. That's going to be a whole day. So women, women, women are ready to just jump in. Men, yeah. Men right. So, so we're going to do three, a few hours. Um, and then we've got coming up the light beings on the, on the, the first week of, of February. February uh, we fifth. have Kevin and his team come in all, I mean, every month. It's exciting. We've got a whole bunch of things. So, so really exciting about what's going on in the, uh, in the facility, in the center. I'm all in now and I'm ready to just, just really teach as much as I know, uh, grow as much as I know. Because the best healers, the best teachers will heal and teach from their personal experience. Come on, somebody. You better say it, Lynn. And, and I use everything that has happened to me. And, and I just started working on a book. You know, it's so funny. It was, uh, what was it? It was about 10, it was about 15 years ago. And I had a reading with a psychic, right? And, 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 and this is my life. Well, she, she says, well, you're going to write a book. And I'm like, I don't know enough to write a book, right? And this is 15 uh, years yeah, ago. Yeah, you do. Right. And that's 15 years ago, right? And so, okay, okay. Yeah, and, and so, and so it's funny. And then, and then, and then Jamaica's writing a book. She's telling me, right, I'll write a book, right? And so just this recently, right, in one of my meditations, Spirit says, now it's time, right? And, and I had a num numerology reading last week. Uh, King Simon, he's phenomenal. And, and he told me that I have not only one master number, I have three in my name. Wow. And so, he, he, and, and he, he, he mentioned writing a book. And so, and so I just started writing. I got three, I got five chapters done and, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just rolling with it. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have that finished by the end of the year, roll it out. It's going to be a bestseller. I, I, I best yes, it is New York bestseller number one. Best yes. And, and so those are some of the things that I'm going to do to really help the, the healing environment and help, you know, uh, and just move it along, partner with my wife and what she's doing is phenomenal. So we're going to grow and, and I'm going to continue to do what I do to, to really help in, in, in anything in the way possible. But I'm excited. I'm so excited. And I know you said we're going to grow, but y'all are already growing. I mean, you all, everything that the healing environment has achieved thus far and everything that they're currently in and cultivating and evolving, you do not want to miss it. Tap in. L don't tap. Lean in to this community Lynn, you are welcome back anytime. You're gonna have to come back because we got a lot yeah, more conversations. Absolutely. This one, I got. I said I gotta let Lynn do the talking because y'all have got to experience this phenomenal human and his other half, Jamaica. Yeah. I, I just want to say, uh, Zen, uh, I, I, and this is for you. Uh, okay. You you coordinated a phenomenal event this past Sunday. Uh, uh, you. uh, Coax Marie came in. I had and you you did a fabulous speech and and then talking and and the motivation and, and I know it's one of your first ones you sat in it you dealt with it you you walked through it and you came out and now you got that confidence I'm proud of you that's the Thank way you do so it much. I mean it's it it was phenomenal it was phenomenal and and just thank you for enduring through that I know it's challenging Hell, I, I've had to sit in stuff I'm like I don't know what the yeah. hell I'm doing. But 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 you, you sit in it and just trust spirit that's going to lead you. Spirit is so funny. Uh, your higher self always puts you in, in situations to grow. 100% of the time, it's absolutely never what you think. It's never what you think. Never what you think. Did y'all hear that? It, woo, that's so true. So, so, that, so, so just know that if there is a situation that you've been placed in, and it is not what your ego says it's going to be. It is something that your higher self says is thinking two and three and four steps down the road for your development. And you need to learn and sit in the existence of the experience of what you're realizing and understand what the lesson is. Uh oh, um, and, and, and I know we were over time, but I want, I want to share this with you. Yes. A secret male experience, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm meditating about three weeks ago, right? Because it's coming up and I'm like, and I'm asking source on, you know, give me some, some things to really resonate on for this three hour session. Right. And so 
here am I, and, 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 and I'm guilty of, of assuming things too. Here am I thinking that I'm gonna get some downloads, some messages, right? The next day, stuff started happening. Bad. Yeah. And and it's just one thing after another, right? The next day, if you look at my, my, my aquarium, I got no fish, right? And so we, I have a guy that comes out and cleans the tank, right? After he left, all the fish died. Well, how many fish? Oh, it was a bunch. It was about 11 or 12. And all of them yeah, died? All of them died. And so, and so I'm calling the owner of, of the place and there can't, you know, he, you know I'm calling. I, and he's like, we'll be out in three. I said, you can't, you got to be out here. I think hopefully they saved some of them. But but the amount of, and he didn't clean the tank the way he should and end up killing a lot of fish. And, and, that, and all of that stuff started happening. That's stuff beyond my control. Right. And so I'm wanting to open up to, to Jamaica. Right. And there's a lot going on in the house, you know. And so and so she's running the center and all of that. And I want to share with her. Right. First time didn't go that well. Right. And so, OK. All right. All right. I'm, I'm going I'm to try to meditate this away. Higher self says, no, you can't meditate this away. You got to sit in it. So I tried again. It didn't go that well. Right. And so she's walking out the door. And so we kind of go, you know, we get in a little bit and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm mad. Her self says, right. Says, right. And so I go to the couch and I proceed to write her a long text with love. It wasn't accusatory. Telling her everything that I feel and what I'm going through and, and, and how I maneuver through. Then she listened. She responded in love. She came home from the center. I'm sitting at the dining room table with my two grandkids eating. She came up and kissed me on the lips and says, let's go, let's go out to dinner. And so, and so I immediately posted and, and posted that and posted when I'm live and, and talked about a little bit of that experience. We're gonna, I'm gonna go into detail. But then I said, then I said, I said to myself, now you have your subject. Now you have your topic for the male experience because the greatest healers will teach from experience. And, 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 so, and so now, and I know there are, there's thousands of men who want to open up, but there's a whole lot going in the house that, 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 that maybe the, the, the wife or somebody or another isn't, isn't in that space to do that. And I said, don't give up, try, try something else. And, and, and spirit says, Man, you 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 have been a creative writer since you was a, a kid. You you're good at it. And then so I just I did. And and it was wow. Now you have your your your, your topic. And so that's that's why I can honestly say, hundred percent of the time, it's never what you think. When higher when higher self puts you in a position to learn, here am I thinking I'm gonna get some messages. Nah, now nah, you 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 gotta live this experience. And, and so once we did that, I'm like, it was a release. And I'm like, damn, I'm like, okay, I get it. So, so I'm always in a position to learn. So that's what we, when we're always doing that. So, so it's been, so it, it, it's been marvelous. So it, it's been, it's been, it's been marvelous. Amazing. Thank you so much, Lynn. And you all look, share this for this men's, um, is it, and it's not a conference. Say what it is again. Experience. Yes, yeah, sacred male experience. Sacred male experience. Yeah, from like from twelve to, to three. So it's just like three hours, and we're, we're gonna we're just gonna kind of share. We're gonna have uh, some somebody to come in, a female to do the, a, a female to do some massages, and there's some 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 movements that you're gonna be able to take back to you and do it with your own. I mean, the psoas muscle holds a lot of trauma. And so if, if there's guys out there that has hip, tight hips and, and, and that front there uh, where, the, where the hips are, that it, it holds a lot of trauma, holds a lot of anger and a resentment. So there's some movements that we can do because it's real hard trying to figure out what, what I'm, what, I'm, what, what what's being held there. Why don't we just do the movements and, and release it on a day to day, you know, and, and get it out that way. So there's, there's different ways to do that. So, so we're going to do that. And, uh, and, and I'm just excited to have that experience. 
So invite the men who are listening, women, your cousin, your husband, your boyfriend, your son, your cousin, your father, men you know with hip pain, the neighbor, whomever, your son's best friend, whomever, invite them to this because what Lynn is going to speak on is so necessary. And it's a message. We thank the divine for that message because it's a message that's really not being talked about in a way that's necessary for it to be talked about. Lynn, I just want to thank you for coming to Life Verbs Podcast. This has truly been a treat, you all. Thank you immensely, Lynn. Thank you for answering the call and your amazing wife for answering the call. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me. This has been an honor and a privilege. Excellent. Excellent. You all tune in. Open your heart space. It's essential and it's necessary in order for you to master discernment and to discern accurately. I just talked about it. Listen to episode 125. It's all about discernment. The nuggets that were offered to you here, if you're listening to this, it's for a reason. So absorb it, digest it, and embody it. That's it.